Welcome back to the news at 10. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Markwe Ogun Yusuf. Markwe? Hello, E. Joma. It's good to see you. you too. The Lord Mayor of the City of London, Mr. Charles Bowman, has indicated the willingness of the United Kingdom government to advance bilateral trade and strengthen existing ties with Nigeria. The mayor is in Nigeria for a three-day visit with a business delegation from London. He had a closed-door meeting with Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo, which he says was productive and would open the way for greater support from the United Kingdom in the promotion of innovation and trade opportunities in Nigeria. I've got a member from the London Stock Exchange, I've got a member from the Commonwealth Enterprise and Investment Council, I've got a member who's supporting the, the fintech industry. And we've just had a very good start of a turn in engaging on those areas where we know that we can build those ties, advance the bilateral trade and investment opportunities across those sectors, infrastructure and many more. What I will often say is that actually what my agenda is all about trade and prosperity. Prosperity builds social cohesion that creates stability that ends up with security. Meanwhile, the British High Commissioner to Nigeria believes that investing in girl-child education is the way to go to achieve comprehensive growth in any society. Mr. Paul Arkwright was speaking at the inauguration of the newly rebuilt Rumokuta Girls Secondary School by the River State Government. The River State Governor, Nyesom Wike, believes that the school will represent a model of a comprehensive secondary school with hostel facilities. Our correspondent, Emmanuel Irei, reports. In Nigeria, a recent study shows that female adult literacy rate from age 15 and above is 59.4% and 74.4% for boys and a higher dropout rate for girls in science, technology, economics, and mathematics, STEM. Founded in 1972, the Government Girls Secondary School Rumokuta in River State has been doing its bit, but it has been limited by lack of adequate facilities. Now, the state government has rebuilt the old dilapidated structures, replacing them with new hostels, science laboratories and classrooms, perhaps to close the gap in girl child education in the state. Since they constructed this school, no government has done renovation, whether you call it minor or major. There has never been any renovation here. The students are the most excited as the governor and the British High Commissioner to Nigeria visit the school for its inauguration. Governor Wike is also concerned about the security of the girls and promises to do something about it. We are going to bring security that will not allow you. All this will, and I want to warn the principal, you cannot be giving out the facilities to outsiders to use as church, to use as whatever. No, it is a boarding school who will not allow outsiders to just come in and go out as they want. For the High Commissioner, the need for the girl child education cannot be overemphasized. I know just how important it is that girls are educated, that they receive a minimum of 12 years of quality education, because when girls are educated, they can then contribute more to the economy of a region, the economy of a country. The school premises houses the primary and secondary sections, which are to be clearly fenced and expected to be the example of what quality girl child education represents. Emmanuel Irene, Channels Television News. That's all from Abuja. It's back to you, Ijoma. Thanks a lot, Mark. Weir. Muka Limited, manufacturers of lifestyle products like mattresses, have received the ISO certification from the Standards Organization of Nigeria. At the presentation ceremony in Lagos, the company also rewarded some of its distributors with brand new delivery trucks. Members of staff of Muka Foams are elated. So are their distributors, some of whom are seated here. Today, the company gets recognized by the Standards Organization of Nigeria for the quality and safety of its products. 
Muka is also introducing the Dreamtime water resistant mattress for children to give sleep, which is long enough, deep enough, and relatively unbroken. It's the first mattress that is specially designed for kids. There are three key benefits body support, pressure relief, and ventilation. The benefit of good quality sleep. It's very well important in good with any child. And one of the core functions is learning and memory. The standards organization proceeds to hand over a certificate of integrated management systems to MUCA Limited. Thank you very much. There is the quality management system, the environmental management system, and then the hazards, uh, safety and hazards. That's the three ISOs put together. So and then bringing the two, uh, three together, a company like this who is looking at quality, environmental, and then hazards and safety at work. That's why we call it the integrated management system. We, ha we have won the ISO, uh, this is the fifth time. Um, we have won the first one for the laboratory, and then we won the quality management system, and then we won the environmental management system, then we won the occupational health and safety system, and now we won the integrated system that integrates all of them. The company rounds off the celebration by presenting keys of brand new delivery trucks to 10 deserving distributors whom it likes to call partners. Muka currently employs hundreds of people and has production facilities in Lagos, Benin and Kaduna. Infinix Mobile has introduced the latest addition to their range of smartphones, the Infinite Note 5, at a global launch in Dubai. According to the group vice president of Transgen Holdings, Arif Chaudhry, the features of Infinite Note 5 include sleek design, quick charge, and longer battery life. The launch, which was in the United Arab Emirates, and our correspondent, Chris Lems, who was there, gives us some highlights of the launch. It's not a tour of Dubai, a city of infrastructure and architecture masterpiece. It's an event to showcase where the new Infinix Note 5 belongs, top of the lots. The global media launch attracts guests from different parts of the world. And they are here with various expectations. I'm here to experience magic. I expect a good camera. The future is here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the global launch of the Infinix Note 5. The event revs up to a start on a note of appreciation from the group vice president, Transham Holdings, the mother company of Infinix Mobile. Whatever we have achieved in the last few years, it happened because we always got great support from our partners. According to the managing director, Infinix Mobile, the brand has grown over the years providing users with remarkable smartphone experience. We know that now we are able to deliver faster and stronger processors, hardware to the market, but at the same time, we know if we cannot help our customers to get the most out of the hardware, actually we are adding no value to customer. Infinix Note 5 Beyond Intelligent Smartphone is powered by Google's Android One program. If you want a device that is future-proof with the latest software and security protection, I think you will love the Infinix Note 5. Show me the what does the Infinix smartphone hold for smartphone lovers in Nigeria? This is uh, the Infinity Display 3 days standby um, battery and lovely uh, low light selfie camera. That is a really amazing feature. And you know how much like, the, like Nigerians, they love to take the selfies. With all these features in one device, the Infinite Note 5 may just be the future in our palms. And from there, we move on to business news. Here's Anne Wilder. You first. First Bank.
Thanks a lot, Ijoma. Business news begins with the business law section of the Nigerian Bar Association setting up a working group with the Securities and Exchange Commission to review some of the provisions of the Investment and Securities Act of 2007. The president of the NBA Business Law, Mr. Olumide Akwata, gave an update on our program Business Morning today. He says the first meeting is due in two days. The Central Bank of Nigeria today injected $210 million into the interbank foreign exchange market as part of its continuous efforts to alleviate dollar shortages and boost liquidity. A breakdown of the total amount released indicates that $100 million was targeted at the wholesale market, $55 million for small businesses and individuals, and $55 million for requests such as school fees and medical bills. The CBN adds that it is ready to inject more funds into the forex market to maintain market stability and sustain the financial system. Sub-Saharan African Financial Services Group Atlas Mara has increased its equity stake in Union Bank of Nigeria to 49%, and that's close to the regulatory threshold as a majority shareholder. In a statement issued in London today, it says that the group brought additional 28.9 million ordinary shares of Union Bank, for which the group will issue 2.3 million new shares as consideration for Union Bank shares acquired. The new shares are expected to be admitted to the f official list of the UK listing authority and it will be traded on the London Stock Exchange effective from Thursday, June the 27th. Atlas Mara has consistently raised its equity position in Union Bank in the last few years, looking to expand the footprints of a service group in Africa's largest economy. The domestic market has closed the day with a marginal decline after earlier posting a brief recovery in the session following mixed performance across board. For details of today's transactions, let's join Chimezie Obiwa. Thank you for joining us on Stock Market Report. The Nigerian equities market couldn't sustain Monday's positive close. This is as a result of a major loss by international breweries, which shared two naira seven kobo of its share price, down 6.14%. Consequently, despite the efforts by the bulls to take position in the market, the index couldn't sustain the bear pressure. As such, it closed flat, but in the negative, down 0.01%. Market breadth remains relatively flat with 22 stocks posting gains while 23 posted declines. Amongst the five major sectors, only two gained while three lost with consumer goods and the banking sectors closing apiece. Transaction volume was over 539 million shares valued at 4.7 billion naira in 4,202 deals. The relatively lower prices of value stocks are still making attractive entry for investors with patient funds. And for traders, things will only get better as the first half of the year gradually comes to an end. And that was the Stock Market Report. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. Thanks a lot, Chimeze. U.S. stock markets have closed higher as energy shares rebound from big losses earlier recorded in yesterday's session. Meanwhile, it's a mixed closing for other major world markets on Tuesday. Let's see the numbers for today. Thanks a lot for watching Business News for tonight. I'm Anne Uwawadu. It's back to you, Juma. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Anne. Still ahead on the news at 10, gallant Super Eagles of Nigeria bow out of the 2018 FIFA World Cup after a narrow defeat to two-time champions Argentina in the final Group D game. That's on sports. Please jump in. Thank you.